It's not every day that you get an emergency alert telling you to seek shelter because there's a big old windstorm coming. It's, well, I mean, I, it's, it's like the Dust Bowl. <laughs> but, um, so I was actually in the yard finishing up on my greenhouses uh, before I got this emergency alert. So I started packing up and, and putting stuff away. Um, but this presents a great opportunity to talk about the um, what I'm doing when it when it comes to um, winter protection. So when it comes to winter, it's not the cold that gets the tropicals. It's more so the combination of the wind and the cold. So if you could address one of them, if you could address the wind, I mean, when it comes to the cold, like there's not much you can do about it. Um, but when it comes to the wind, oh yeah, you, there's definitely a lot you can do. Um, if you come here, <laughs> so I plan, I have plan ahead, and strategically, I've got my ice cream bin there, tethered to the taxpayer funded light pole here. It's not gonna go anywhere, assuming the rope holes, unlike the neighbors' trees. Uh, you, you probably can't tell by the sky, but it is just ugly. Oh yeah. Well, one of the benefits, I guess, of the storm is you get fruit off of the ground. So, if you come here, I mean, just about all of my, well, the two mangoes anyway, I've, I've got them tethered to the uh, post here, so it's not gonna really go anywhere. Yeah. So let's uh let's take you to the back. I wanted to show you what I did with um, the greenhouses. Before we go to the greenhouses, uh, uh, let me show you. This is a great example of microclimate. I know I've mentioned this a billion times, but store fruits. If you come here, store fruits, okay not a fan of the wind. They definitely can take the sun. They definitely can take the winter. The wind is gonna be what gets to them. And if you notice, even though it's like hurricane outside, this area is relatively calm because it is shelter between the two properties here. Uh, in fact, it's actually starting to sprinkle as we speak, as I speak. Um, but yeah, you gotta be strategic when it comes to the position of some of these trees. So let's uh, take so you back. First greenhouse, okay. If you come here, this is actually built using just wooden frame, like for cheap. I mean, the plastic that I've been using, I've just been reusing year after year after year. So it, it's, it's just a one-time investment. Same with the wood, nothing fancy. I, I'm actually, I've got it actually to um, protect my, uh, the big old wax jamboo in there. Uh, let me, yeah, it, it's hard for you to uh, see it from this angle, but there's a big old wax jamboo in there. Now, if you've noticed, this is minimal protection, okay? I've got this down here just for ventilation and, and air circulation. Uh, but what I'm more concerned about are the top and the side. Now, if you've noticed the way that I've got this particular greenhouse set up, uh, the side that's facing my house is actually not even covered. And right behind it, there's a ventilation there connected to my laundry, uh, the dryer. So anytime we do laundry, essentially, it, it blows out nice warm air to this, uh, the greenhouse. Um, you know what, let me, let me see if I can just get in there for you. I wanted to kind of show you this to you. All right, so here it goes. Woo! It is crazy. Uh, here it goes. Oh boy. Yeah. It's actually very spacious in here. Very calm. Got my, uh, the June plum there along with the young papaya there. But this guy is happy even though it's a hurricane outside. Uh, it's, you don't even feel anything in here. So again, my protection is I'm more concerned about the wind as opposed to the actual cold. 
So, and again, this is cheap. You don't need to spend a whole lot of money on greenhouses. Another one, okay, a more permanent structure, of course, is this guy right here. This is due to the size of the greenhouse. Um, I, I'm using him more or less as my seedling uh, greenhouse. Uh, in fact, if you come here, let me show you. Woo, man, I mean, the storm is here. I don't think I've seen it like this before. All right, let's uh, give you a quick tour. Yeah, this is the more permanent structure. Um, got a heater in there set to 50 degrees. So anytime it goes below 50, it kicks on automatically. Uh, so it minimum is a 50 degrees in here. So yeah, and of course I am keeping an eye on my, uh, the tree just to see how they're doing. But it is so humid in here. The trees are loving it. The seedlings are loving it. But you know what? Sometimes this is what you need uh, if you don't want to grow into the garage. <laughs> So yeah, this is where most of my seedlings and more of the s s tropical, uh, sensitive tropicals are. So one last greenhouse. This is the, the I wouldn't even call it a greenhouse, it, but it's more of a temporary protection. Oh boy. It is windy. Now you, the audio, probably won't pick it up, but uh, I'm telling you, it is uh, just windy, windy. If you look at the bamboo that I've got strategically planted there, without that bamboo breaking down the wind as it comes from the west, oh boy, I mean, a lot of what I've got here is gonna be just dehydrated come winter time. Uh, so uh, go going back to why I'm saying the wind is a bigger problem than the coal, okay? What happens is the combination of the wind and the coal, as the wind blows through the foliage, because it is coal, it's usually gonna be wet, okay? It just sucks the vapor, sucks the, um, the moisture out of the trees, causing them to kind of just basically dehydrate and die out. Uh, but yeah, no, these tropical fruit trees absolutely can take the uh the, the coal direct coal uh if you got some uh wind protection um uh, against them so this is the the greenhouse that i wanted to talk about it's more or less just a, a temporary protection uh against the wind for all the more sensitive stuff inside here let me uh show you actually yeah, I mean, again, the, the bottom is not even close. I, I, I'm, it's not the, the warmth that I'm concerned about. It's just the wind. Uh, in fact, check it out. Look at this, how calm it is in here. Yes, you, you see the walls, you know, moving. But then, it's like nothing happens here. It's very nice and uh, protected. Yeah, look at that. Yep, so I, I may come back and uh, reinforce that down there. Oh boy. I may come back and reinforce that. <laughs> Again, I got the emergency notification as I was finishing up this uh, greenhouse. Um, but boy, I mean, See, the, the problem is, it, it's not so much that these guys can't take the cold. It's just that, well, I'm sorry, the, the winter, as in cold and the wind. It's more so that I just don't want them to bounce back year after year. Instead, I want to, I want the trees to retain the growth that they, that they had, and the progress that they made throughout the year, and by giving them this minimal protection, I mean, this is minimal. Um, many of these trees should not have to start from square one again. 
uh, and instead it, it, it's gonna start growing next uh, year once uh, spring is here. So that's what I'm, uh, I'm doing with these uh, ultra sensitive tropicals. Yeah, this is what I mean by it. it's, it's, it's really just a temporary solution. It's not a, you know, I, I don't want this to be a, uh, an actual permanent greenhouse as in a, um, uh, yeah, a climate control greenhouse. Oh boy, okay, so it is rainy now. But a couple pointers about uh, the greenhouse, in my case anyway. Um, the construction material, okay, I use these galvanized pipes. Best place to get them would be your local flea market or swap meet. Same with the joints. It's just a big box frame. You've got the pipes, you've got the joint, the corner connectors, big old box, that's really it. And then uh, the plastic is uh, six mil painter's plastic. Make sure to get the clear one. Don't get the ones that's solid gray. Those, they might say it's clear, but you gotta get the clear one. Otherwise, the sunlight's not gonna be able to penetrate the, uh, the plastic. And in, again, in my case, I reuse them every year. So it's just a one-time purchase for me. But th that's what I'm willing to do for some of the more sensitive tropicals. Now, as you can see, everything else around me, <laughs> the ice cream bean there, uh, all the stuff that's underneath it. You know, I, I may construct a little mini greenhouse for these. Uh, two guys here. This is a, uh, a, a lemon mangosteen along with the um, milk berry. I, I do, both of these are a bit cold sensitive, so I don't know if the canopy is gonna be able to protect them enough. But I mean, yeah, it is, it, it's windy. Look at, look at the chair moya. You, you could kind of maybe tell. But now in my case, it, it looks a bit ugly, okay, but I've got ropes everywhere. Without these ropes, yeah, a lot of my trees would just be all over the place. Now, I will say, uh, a lot of folks have negative things to say about our clay soil, but without the clay soil in the ground, I guarantee you a small little bit of wind is gonna be able to uproot most of these trees. The clay soil, it just anchors these trees to the ground. So yeah, these guys are like, they're not moving. It is anchored to the ground. So it's, uh, it's raining pretty hard now. So I'm gonna go and just call it a day. All right, have a good afternoon.